Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verbenam. Okay, so we're back to part two of the interview with Greg and Mitchell from ASAP Science. In this part, we're going to finish up with one more question from my secret stash of questions, and then we're going to answer a question from Nick Jenkins. Uh, Nick, when I talked to Nick, uh, I asked him at the end of the interview, you know, if you could ask YouTubers anything, what would you want to know? And he asked me, basically to ask other people, like, is this this YouTube channel thing that you're doing? Would you say that this is a means to an end, or is this the end point? And I thought that was a great question. Not in the least because Mitch and Greg gave an awesome answer. So, without further ado, let's find out what they've got to say. My last question to them is, what are some challenges you guys face with doing ASAP Science? Well, I think something that we struggle with is like a work-life balance. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> On a more personal <laughs> level, because we are in our house. <laughs> and we don't have a boss, yeah. so like, we're our own bosses, which is interesting. We're young, I mean like, we're 25 years old, we didn't plan for this to happen, so we were 23 when we started this. Um, we, I think it's just sort of a matter of trying to figure out like how to balance this job, this amazing thing that could easily be taking up 24 hours a day and not sleeping, could do it all the time, and our life and our ability to like maintain happiness through our personal lives. So like I think that is something that I know I'm struggling with right now, and that we especially did in the winter when we were so busy doing this thing for the CBC. We had like no free time, we weren't happy. So I think. It's just sort of trying to figure out how to deal with this amazing thing that is very time consuming and there's only two of us and we still don't even have time to figure out how to get more people involved. Right. <laughs> and then while also making sure that we take time for ourselves and ensure that we are reading and like doing things to make sure that we stay motivated to educate people and are motivated in the field of science. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a surprising weird Thing that when people are a lot of our friends when they know what we're doing they're so envious because they have like you know corporate jobs and they're just so like oh it's so cool but you're like I know you, know, you just don't want to sound like you're complaining or anything you're just trying to it's just like there are struggles with everything and just because you're running your own business so it's just a great thing it's also like it's hard it's like mm -hmm. there's so many emails every day there's so much all this stuff and then you do these videos all the time which are amazing oh, it's just it's crazy 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 amounts of work and I just think we just have are starting to learn how to figure out how to like take time mm -hmm. for ourselves. Yeah. And um, it's all been like, it's kind of like an exponential. Like when we first started, it was like laid back. Like I missed the days when yeah. it was like, it really was one video a week and few emails in between. And like, you just kind of like got to chill. And like, I, I ran it, like we started it together and then Greg went away and taught. And I was able to manage like everything as myself. Like even all the Facebook and Twitter and that, like mostly by myself. And then eventually it was like, okay, like this is getting to be a lot. And then like, Greg came back and we like both did it. Everyone like, like, cool, started saying like, yes to things. Cool. Yeah, then you're like excited. You want to say yes to everything, and now the, eventually it's just like now two is not enough. Now there's three. Like you want to keep it in control. You can go out of whack, and maybe we could have like the biggest educational business in the world, which would be exciting, but also like at what cost? And so for us, that probably is like the genuine biggest challenge. Is like what is the cost of like our lives and happiness? And like, obviously we can't be motivated and inspired if we're like so bogged down by like just the sheer amount of stuff we have to do. And I think it does come down to the crazy, like the industry's changing. And I think that the most frustrating part for us is there's so many people coming out of the woodwork with all these exciting opportunities and all this money and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And they're all just like emailing us all the time. And it's so hard to just be like, no, because yeah. it's like their opportunities sound so great on paper mm -hmm. and we're not, we don't have business backgrounds and I think we slowly are starting to learn how to sift through the bullshit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like we were just, you know, saying yes to all these things and saying, okay, yeah, maybe like give us more information and it takes so much time, mm -hmm. so much energy doing all this administrative bullshit <laughs> that really like you, it was easy for us to lose focus. And so I think we're trying to be like, we love what we're doing. We want to make ASAP science, ASAP thought videos a week. We want to say yes to projects that are meaningful, but it's just hard when there's so many people kind of wanting a piece and mm -hmm. pitching themselves in ways that are like, make it seem like you're, we're going to benefit from them yeah. when really they're only going to benefit from us. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it's just, it's a weird part of the puzzle that no one sees. It's like us hunched over our computer being like, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think that's sort of something that mm -hmm. is a struggle. But what you're doing is different because you're trying to make like a positive difference. I'm not trying, I'm not talking about people who are like wanting to talk like to us. It's usually like business Yeah, these are people like... who are wanting us to do 
a business that usually involves money usually involves a corporation. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about things like what you're mm -hmm. doing. Yeah, actually, those are things that are like, yeah, that's fine. Like, we don't. And we it's want just, yeah, we love talking about what we're anyone doing. Anyone can say no to that just as easy as they need yeah, to. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, it is... We're talking about more time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's weird, yeah. That. And, and it's like the cumulative effect of like hundreds of people asking for yeah. different things. And you're like, that could be a really interesting opportunity. Like, okay, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's have a phone call. Let's like <laughs> go through emails. And then eventually you're like, oh my God, like this was so much time invested for something that we now realize. And like, stress and energy. Yeah. It's like, you're like, why are you even caring about this? We have to do a video. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I'd say that that's our personal struggle for sure. Yeah. And now Nick wants to know, is ASAP science the end result for you? Or is it a stepping stone to something else? Well, okay, from, for me personally, it's interesting because I was a teacher for one year last year. And I, <clears throat> I'm sort of like realizing like there's two parts of education and being a teacher. And this is a completely different way of doing it. But for me, like I, I only taught for one year. And so, and, but I did love it. It was so hard. It was so challenging. But I guess it comes down to your personality trait because I really did enjoy like the actual building relationships with students and being able to see on a personal level how they learn, like getting to see what you're doing actually coming into effect. So that was amazing and something that I'm sort of envious of in the position that we are now, which is great. We, we realize that we are educating a lot of people and it's very, very exciting for us. But I guess personally, having being able to see the personal connection with students and actually build a relationship and see that happening is much different than where we are now. We're very, we don't get to see the result of what we're doing other than hearing about it through social media and things like that. So the one thing that I would say is that what we, or what I guess I'm, I want to, and I think we both want to do, is some, somehow figure out a way to make it actually grow within school so that we could maybe be involved in something so it could be something else where we could actually see people on, in a real way, like growing from it. Like maybe working with schools or something like that. I think that it would make me find an easier way to appreciate what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But that's a personal thing. I think it comes down to my yeah. personality traits as someone who's like a people person. For sure. Definitely that's the hardest part. I know this doesn't really answer your question, but <laughs> but just I think numbers become numbers and they always are numbers. And when we started a thousand views was a lot and now a million views is like, oh, did good. You know what I mean? Like it's the this bizarre thing where like you, ne you never can really gauge the effect until at, if we go to like events or even at VidCon, you like meet people who really love what you do and they tell you how much they love it and then they start oh, talking about learned. yeah what they've yeah. learned or like they passed because like the videos online have inspired them to actually like study more and that's the kind of stuff when you get that personal connection and that's just like a pretty super a superficial connection versus like being in a classroom where you could like see a kid like evolve over an entire year and then like actually be interested in science and so that would be a much larger challenge I think. Uh, I think we're lucky in that way. We just have like the superficial challenge of like, hey, here's something like, let's talk about farts and like make it interesting. And like, maybe that will be a catalyst, but I think there'd be a whole new satisfaction of like, how can ASAP science maybe become something that does that? Being a teacher is a very rewarding, challenging, amazing job that I think is so fulfilling in a way that mm -hmm. um, I just don't know if this is in the same way, just solely based on the ability to like see people evolve. Yeah. It's definitely, I'm not sure if we have like an end result that we're looking for yeah. with ASAP Science. Like I'm not sure, A, it was just the, the hope that we can get more people interested in science. Like that was kind of always like the core. Like who are the people who think they don't like science, think it's too hard, how do we reach them? How do we talk about things that relate to them so that they can see like science isn't just like your preconceived notion of like this boring uh, equation in class that you hate doing. And just because your teacher's maybe not that interesting doesn't mean there's not many other interesting teachers out there online or in classrooms that could have been better for you and so um that was kind of the goal of it but like the end result is still like open to possibilities like where it goes i think we can't even plan a weekend yeah it's so crazy <laughs> we're just like sifting through like a storm yeah like. and i think you can't plan it because because the medium is so new and like the speed at which things happen is so fast like we couldn't have planned those things ahead of time like where we are now compared to two years ago, I think it would have been a little presumptuous to assume we would be here. Like, in fact, we never ever would have assumed like the multitude of things that have happened to us. Like, we got to work with Bill Nye the Science Guy and that yeah, was like a dream and a joke when we first started the channel. And, and like little <laughs> yeah. things like that you can't plan for. And so I think 
in terms of like where the channel goes, it's still like, we have no idea. This could be a curve that's like had its turn or it could just be like a forever ending slope. So we'll kind of see. Um, Enjoy it well. Yeah, and I think like hopefully take advantage of the opportunities that come about to do something different and make an impact on the world. While but, not selling it. Yeah, while not selling it, right? Like by not getting <laughs> like is... jaded by like, the world we're in is like the new entertainment world, right? It's and like crazy. we have an access to like millions of people who watch videos and you know, people with money see that and that that's like I think a hard we're like in this weird time for everyone on YouTube who's like, you know, there's there's a lot of dollar dollar bills being thrown out there. Um, and science and education is like such a space where you need people to be like have a lot of conviction that like what they're doing is more meaningful and more worthwhile than money. Obviously we all want to have a successful business and be able to continue and like we we can't continue this the only reason we can do it is because we make money doing it, right? Like Greg um, left his job when ASAP Science became like, well not left his job, but like finished the year. Um, because <laughs> yeah. ASAP Science became like such a thing that we needed more people and now we have another person helping us and it's like, this might turn into something bigger. So that requires like funds and people and whatever. But um, beyond that, it's like, how do you stop yourself from just getting too excited by like money and green or whatever. Mm -hmm. right? Of course it's great that money's coming into the system to help people make better things or better videos and like that can be a really good thing but it can also like yeah. destroy some of the good parts of of the entertainment industry mm -hmm. in general you know yeah I, it's, I think it's the same thing with it. artists right like any artist can be swayed by money and or and and sell out or like this happens in every different industry i think especially creative endeavors like where you're authentic to yourself you become popular or like it, there's a way to become popular because money i don't know mm -hmm. I think I think like musicians and stuff would hit the same sort of struggle, yeah. but I think education's like this it needs to be the stronghold because that's mm -hmm. like where you can't compromise because yeah. art is subjective, but like education, I don't want to say is more important, but it has a different sort of like black or white. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah totally. Yeah. That's hard though. I've always had like problems, not problems, but like uh, like I've never known whether that's the route to go and like you don't want your mm -hmm. audience also to be the one yeah. directing you mm -hmm. they can and like we're so grateful that they ask questions and give us their ideas of what they want to know um but i think that's like a, a fine line to walk when like now your audience controls you how do you make sure like your creative endeavors can you know what i mean because we're gonna want to take risks and some might be bigger flops than others not not because we're selling out necessarily but maybe we just had an idea that didn't connect with people and I wouldn't want our audience to like be pissed that we took a risk you know what I mean like yeah I think with any product with any business like part of the success has to come from like you knowing something that your audience maybe doesn't you know what I mean they can give you all the advice in the world but like true inspiration or true like creative ideas sometimes come out of the blue and people can't see them until they see them, right? Like if I told you a thing, a thing I think is a great idea or even you a thing, I, you know, something that I think is great, like it may not translate until I show you or maybe it will never really translate, I don't know. It's just like a fine line of like, I know some YouTubers who seem to be stuck in a rut of like, I have to do this because my viewers want me to do this. Like I've confined myself into a box that is really difficult to get out of. And I mean, it's happened to ASAP Science in a sense that like it has its format, it has its structure. When Bill Nye was in our video, people, some people got pissed. Like they were like, why is there a person in this video? Like, who is this man? Like obviously <laughs> he's like a North American icon, but he's not like a world icon necessarily. Um, I mean, at least maybe not to everyone. And so that was like an eye opener. Like, whoa, like some people are so mad that Bill Nye the We're Science so guy's in the video. Yeah. Like that's so crazy. Like, and, and they don't even pay us to make these videos. You know what I mean? Like. They were entitled, like, why have you changed this? Like, this is crap, um, <laughs> which is strange. And we just kind of have to laugh that off and be like, well, we, we really want to do that. That was fun for us and we think it's a really good video. So like, hopefully the majority sure. of people <laughs> will agree. And I think the majority did, but yeah. yeah, my point just is like, your audience is one part of the equation, mm -hmm. um, but so is like your own um, personal ideas and the integrity. Skills that you yeah, like, um, yeah, like, like, so. what if we can't make a video for a month and now yeah. people are pissed that they, like, I know, I guess Patreon or whatever, it's like usually per video, but people might feel entitled, like, yeah. hey, I'm giving you money and now you're not delivering mm -hmm. the way that I expected you to deliver. Yeah. So that's always been like a, because we've been discussing, like, people have told us, hey, like, try out Patreon or try out Subbable, and mm -hmm. it's like, definitely a, a great thing to be there, especially for people who want it, but I don't know. Will we do it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, actually, I was kind of curious. How like do you guys go off of ad revenue or like how do you fund? 
Yeah, mostly ad revenue. I mean, we, we have like sponsors for the show and stuff that like we'll sponsor, like we'll Audible will sponsor or like GE has sponsored some of our videos. And so those are usually one offs, but the like that combined with like YouTube um, ads. And it's so. like, as you can see, there's like a whiteboard. Like yeah, markers, very limited camera, resources required. There's so. two of us <laughs> and we have one other person now. And the videos got consistently enough views that the ad revenue yeah. is like good enough. Us, so. mm -hmm. It works out. I mean, yeah. we've had some other opportunities pop up here and there where we can go do something or work with somebody else, and like definitely the exposure of our channel has given us opportunities. But I would say for the most part, like it's AdSense based or or sponsors based. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is the end of the interview. Now, what kind of things in your daily life do you wonder about the science of? Has there ever been a time where you just look around or find yourself doing something and be like, how does this even work? Like. I can't even. Let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Tumblr or Twitter or whatever social medium of your choice. Uh, a series of ones and zeros transmitted through electromagnetic spectrum waves. Whatever. Uh, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Until then, thanks for caring. Uh, and I will talk to you later. All right. Bye.